Hi guys, it's 6.42, Saturday evening, and I'm bored. <laughs> and I've just started this video again because I completely tossed it up, so... Now, I'm just going to bring this closer. First off, Cat Strikes has asked me a couple of questions which I said I would answer in video. Because it's a lot easier than trying to type it all out through messages on um, Facebook or Skype. Um, and she asked if I could build her a trailer and how long I would need. And why I want to get rid of some of my um, bike parts. So I'm going to start with the trailer. If we had all the bits together, you know, we didn't have to go and get anything. We had all the... All the materials we needed right there a day to make it easy. Um, but here's a little diagram of the chassis I use on my trailer out front, which is basically you got two lengths of box section that go across the trailer. The box of the trailer goes this way. So this is going across the trailer, and then four bits, or two bits I should say, of angle iron either side, and the shaded in area is where the wheel sits. <coughs> so you'd have <coughs> another hole, this bit is a diagram of um, as if we were looking at the trailer this way on from this end. So in the end of the angle iron, You'd have a hole for the wheel axle to go through, same with this inner bit. That's your box section where it bolts to with bolts. 13mm bolts. <coughs> and that is that's basically it, and the same that side, you know, the axles would go. <coughs> this is the uh, end of years if we were looking at the end of the wheel bit. So we've got the wheel, the box section going across, and we've got the bit of angle iron there and a bit of angle iron there then your axle for your wheel would just bolt through either or throw through both I should say <coughs> um, but what we could also do is because um, I do believe her idea is to make the box part of the trailer and then put like the front end of a bicycle on it so it would become like a trike a trike with like a storage box on the back big old box on the back um, so what I was actually thinking of doing is electrifying it and uh, having an electrically driven wheel in each here an e-bike wheel and uh, you know going up to one throttle on the handlebar and uh, Bob's your uncle. Or we could just put one in the front wheel. But you wouldn't have as much power if if we did that. Um, and you wouldn't have pedal back up either. Which we could still do. I could still do pedal back up because I could uh, make an axle. Or in fact, Catch Trikes has an axle that we could use for this bit, which would have all the centre bit in with all the free wheel and gears on it already, <coughs> which would save us the trouble of doing that, and I'm making something up. So if um, Catch Trikes wanted, we could have the pedal back up and an electric wheel in the front. <coughs> but uh, the whole reason, well, there's multiple reasons I want to get rid of a lot of my bike parts. I'm not fixing them or building them as frequently as I was. So a lot of them are just sitting there doing nothing apart from taking up room. <coughs> um, also, I've got like a box of um, vintage brake calipers in the kitchen. I'll quickly show you. 
these I can clean up and put on eBay so I can get a bit of money there. Clean them up, pair them up, you know, front and rear. That's rear, still got all the cable connected, but if I just take this all apart, clean it up as best I can, take those crappy brake blocks off, and then find a front to go with it. I think it could be this one actually. Could be that one. Or if I can, perhaps find a cleaner front. There's another front one. And uh, stick them on eBay as a pair. That is a pair. And uh, I could get, minimum I'd get is about three quid for a pair. Depends how clean I can get them. So that's the other reason. Get rid of some stuff for a bit of pocket money. <clears throat> and it'll give me a bit of room. But uh, there's a lot of wheels in the outside cupboard that I don't need, so. And forks and handlebars that I probably won't ever need now. We'll get to that in a minute. There is a reason that's like that. But, uh... I've got the Windows 98 machine that powered up. It goes online now. There we go. <laughs> I had to install drivers for um, flash drives. So I could put the Firefox on this one. I went to oldapps.com and downloaded an old version that worked on this. It does work. You can see Google's my home page and you've got to be connected to the internet to get to the Google home page. So... But, uh, just in case you still don't believe me. <laughs> there we go. I can do a search. You can't do that unless you're connected. And of course... Facebook. This is actually working a lot faster than my Windows 2000. I might change the Ethernet card in my Windows 2000 because it is slow as shit. Anyway, what am I going? What can I do? Save on a bit of juice. I'll shut this one down. But to do it, I've got to reach behind here to the switch. Watch the screen and then hit the switch to turn it off. Because for some reason, even though I hit the shutdown, it just reboots. I'm just going to flick that to the Windows now 5. Found a mouse that actually works as well. Yeah, Zesty Panda on YouTube suggested putting, um, well, they didn't suggest, what they did was um, left a comment saying that my Dell Optiplex GX60 would make a decent um, a decent um, Windows 2000 so what the heck is that? It's like a signature of some sort. Ah. Oh. That's actually quite nice. Something to do with their account. That's what that is. Yeah, I'm going to keep that one. Okay. I like that one. But, uh, can't get online with this. There's nothing here to let me. I've come to the conclusion that Windows 95 doesn't have the ability or not to connect through an Ethernet. Unless there's something on here that I don't know, and this has just gone bloody crashed. Oh, the joys of Windows 95! Run a program and the damn thing. Oh, fuck it. <coughs> oh. 
Oh, excuse me. Right. Now, we're going to go over here. Because as you know, FM band on this wasn't working. Well, as you can see, FM is selected. So... between Hartford East and Broxbourne. It and works! Of a broken... Mostly new, I suppose. Uh, paranormal. Yes. So yes. can we do this with stories as well? Because you've got such a good range of... Do you know what it was? It was... a faulty solder joint. That's all it was. I just happened to be poking around with the circuit board again. Because you know... Actually, I don't know if you know, because I think I'm... Uh, deleted that footage, but... I did have it all in bits, and I was just looking at the circuit board, and I noticed this large just blob of horrible-looking solder, so I haven't got the soldering iron, and I just pretty much jabbed it and heated it up and let it reflow, and it just, it's sort of come back to life ever since. <laughs> so, I've got three good radars. I actually did a tape test on these and let the tape run. Left speaker has stopped working on this, and I'm pretty certain it's to do with the volume control because it's always been temperamental. Right, here we go. Yeah, I've got a 3Com um, PCI Ethernet adapter on this because the only drivers from the Dell's web there, from the Dell's website that I couldn't get to work were the Ethernet drivers for the onboard Ethernet. But uh, I've got a 3Com PCI Ethernet card in there that works. So, but it is slow. Seriously, that Windows 98 one is actually faster. I ain't kidding. Well, I think the painkillers are kicking in because my headache has gone now. should in a few got built-in speaker the classic crappy built-in speaker but again it's got a dodgy mouse on it as you can tell because I can't get it on Firefox we just click Firefox I'll bring it up in its own time, but this one goes online as well. Voila. Um, got to remember this is the way you got to do it. With the older versions of Firefox uh, and this fucking mouse works. www dot Google dot co dot uk. So now, when I hit home page, we should go to Google. There we go. Connected, just like the Windows 98. Gonna get yourself connected. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Better run down in a little while and just lock my bikes up. Oh, get out of this freaking crap. Yeah, actually, speaking of radios as well, I bought another one. It's not going to be in there, is it? There it is, I got that one. Spares or repairs, £5. The reason it spares or repairs is because it's untested. Blah, pardon. 
gets untested because they obviously haven't got an adapter to test it. It's 12 volt supply. I've got shed loads of 12 volt adapters. The only problem is that TV is center negative, not center positive. So with one of my 12 volt adapters, whatever one I can find fit the socket, I'm going to have to cut the wire and turn the wires around, cross the wires over basically. That will just make the center become negative because I swapped the wires around. It works, I've done it before. <clears throat> now, I have also spent one pound and ninety pence on five capacitors. Uh, 2,200 microfarad at 25 volt. <clears throat> and the reason I've bought those, because not only did I sell my chopper today, reluctantly I might add, but with Victory getting as they are, I just don't want shit stored around here, so I sold it. Mum paid me back what she owed me as well. But I need replacements for these. These are the filter caps that go on the speaker outlets. They're wired straight. If you followed this yellow wire right here, it actually goes straight to the um, speaker jack there. And the other one goes into this wiring loom. Because um, at the moment, I've got one off. I can't remember where I've put it, but there is one some bloody way. It's disappeared. There it is. And that's one of them. This one's knackered. That one's gone. This one does the left side, so that connects to this one. Um, and that's extremely crackly and distorted when that was on, so I did replace it, so it went bang, because I put the wires around the wrong way. But now I know the polarity, because I've double checked it with this one. I'm going to get two more new ones, wire them in, I'll shorten these wires. I'll probably zip tie the capacitor to that or something to keep them out of the way. And uh, this one, it's not that bad, but it does distort after a while. So that one's going. So I figured I'll just get the set of five I found, you know, £1.90 for five. I thought that's not a bad price. Get those. Install two when they arrive. I'll get some um, heat shrink from QDs tomorrow. So I'll need one. I need a bit to go on this wire here. Because the insulation actually fell off. <laughs> yeah, this, this is actually soldered on. So is that. I'll just put some tape around it to insulate it when I was experimenting. So, and that will be that. Working perfectly fine after that. That's the only issue with it for now. But it's such a nice looking old unit. Old British unit, it's a Dynatron. Apparently the Queen's favourite according to the label on the front. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it all works. So, I've got all the base screws there. I am going to unplug this because it's still plugged in. So, don't know if that is actually live. It could be, but at least the switch at the front is going to be live. So, no touchy touchy. Otherwise you'll get a big shocky. <laughs> so that's about what I've been up to. I just figured as I joined a transistor radio Facebook group I'd uh, ask for a bit of advice on there about that Dynatron and Someone suggested, um, actually several people said I could get away with the 2200 microfarad, so that's what I'm going to put in. Actually, I think the one I put in myself was exactly the same. been chatting away.
Right, I'm going to leave the video here then because the battery's going down again because I keep running on for so long and restarting and the battery just goes <laughs> So, uh, I don't know what you want, you've been fed so piss off. So, uh, thanks for watching. As always, if you've got any comments or even questions, feel free to leave them down below. Or if you know my Facebook, come and bug me on there. And uh, I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye!